All right, we're gonna get into a receiver dryer now in the TXV system. So once again, we're working with the TXV. And uh, I've got one right here in my hands, but uh, first let's take a look at the inside here so we uh, refresh her what's going on here. So we got our AC condenser. AC compressor. Compressor discharge line going to the condenser, high pressure gas converting to a high pressure liquid, liquid line feeding the receiver dryer. Okay. So as liquid refrigerant enters this, it will drop to the bottom of the receiver dryer. So our goal is to never deplete this of refrigerant. We, we always want liquid refrigerant inside of the dryer assembly itself. So we're going to drop this down to the bottom. Any gas is going to accumulate up here, and, and our hopes would be that the, condas, the gas that's in there will condense and change to a liquid so we can let it continue to move through the system. As we leave the receiver dryer, we have to ensure that we are drawing liquid refrigerant out of the bottom down here. And what I've done is I've made that pipe connection going out, but also this pipe extends up in some of these receiver dryers and I happen to have one right here and and if you look at the top there's a uh, sight glass they refer to that as sight glass and there's also let's see here this one's labeled condenser and you probably can't see that and over here it says evaporator so this is where it comes in and as it leaves leaving that pipe actually runs all the way down to the bottom. Okay? So that pipe also extends all the way up to the top so you can see what's in that pipe. And that's what I've done here. The pipe goes all the way to the top and at the top of there is a glass so that you can watch the refrigerant go pass through. Why is that important? Well, if, if this is truly drawing liquid through it or pushing liquid through, that that sight glass, as you look at it, is going to be completely clear. It's almost like looking through a glass of water, right? It's clear, you can see through it. If I mix that with air, or in this case, uh, refrigerant that has not condensed yet, so it's still in the gas form, what would happen is the level in the bottle would drop down to the point to where we're drawing some refrigerant and some gas. And when that's happening, if I look in the little sight glass right here, I'm going to see all this aerated bubble stuff flowing by, which is an indicator to me that the level in the bottle is too low. I don't have enough refrigerant in the system. So that's a nice feature if they happen to have a sight glass on the receiver dryer. So I can look at that. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. So we're going to draw, and we want liquid to continue through the system and move on to the expansion valve in there. So inside of here, um, if you can see that, there is a screen in there. Once again, we are drawing liquid refrigerant and there should be AC refrigerant oil within that. So we keep the oil moving through the system this way, um, other than what's the design of an accumulator. Also, this still has one in there. It's, uh, it's really in sad shape, but I can't get it out of there, but there is a there, part of it tore out. There's a desiccant bag inside of here to collect moisture as well. Non-serviceable. Nothing inside of here is serviceable. It's all one entire unit. So um, now, now I haven't mentioned this with the other with the accumulator system, but I want you to understand something here. Is that if I have a receiver dryer on an AC system. That means that I have to have a thermal expansion valve of some sort, whether it be like this or like this. These go together. Okay. A receiver dryer and a thermal expansion valve work on the same system. I cannot have an accumulator and a thermal expansion valve on the same system. It, it doesn't happen. It won't happen. Accumulator requires the orifice tube. Okay. So I just want to be clear about that. All right.
hopefully you got an understanding of what's going on inside of this component.